demand and ample supply, and the Obama administration's all of the above energy policy, which seems in many quarters to mean none of any uh, uh, available. Uh, Robert Bryce, senior fellow with the Center for Energy Policy and the Environment at the Manhattan Institute, author of the book Power Hungry, The Myths of Green Energy and the Real Fuels of the Future. Thomas Pyle, the president of the Institute for Energy Research. Uh, good to have the opportunity to talk with both of you. Uh, Robert, you're there in Austin, Texas, Energy Central. Uh, tell us real succinctly why in the world we have to put up with 15-year low demand, uh, a, a run-up in crude oil inventories, ample supply, and record gasoline prices, near record gasoline prices. Well, uh, sure, that's that's a key issue, uh, Lou, and I think as your previous guest discussed, I think a lot of that is the the issue of uh, Iran and the the, the fear of, of military conflict with Iran. Uh, but I hope we can also talk about the Well, no, we're going to talk about Robert. The, the, Robert, don't do that to me, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. It, okay, it, Lou, you know, I'll let I'm, you I'm lead. asking Go a ahead. straightforward question, you know, and, and sure. we'll get to lots of others. But I, okay. I want to hear from two energy experts on what the dickens is going on here, because this is taking money out of folks' pockets. Uh, Tom, give, us, give it a shot. I mean, I can't believe energy experts can't succinctly say to us why in the world with fifth, demanded a 15-year low, supplies at this level that we have to put up with working men and women in this country uh, having to pay these prices. Well, I think you got to look at the global demand. It's, it's going up in other places in Europe and here it's down, but it's skyrocketing in Asia and this price is a global price. So even though the price of crude is level, the price of, of so the distillates is going I'm, I'm up. So wait a minute, I'm a little confused. So why are we trying to reduce demand? Why are we even messing with this? You're saying our destiny isn't in our own hands. Our destiny is that in we our don't own have... hands, Act actually. Oh, we can do more here by having our government send strong signals to the market that we are the number three I'm producer, but we want to be the number one producer. Well, let let me jump in help. if I can, Lou. Yeah, I want an if answer. If I can jump in for a second. Well, well, the, the answer is that what, what in, it used to happen in the global oil market was that we traded just crude. Now what's happened in the last decade, and particularly in the last five years or so, and the U.S. is a leader in this trend, is that the refined products market is a global market now. So that, that U.S. consumers are vying for the same gallon of gas as motorists in Mumbai, Shanghai, and, and, and Rio de Janeiro. So okay. this is not, we, 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 if we could, we could set, we, uh, the, the point is, we cannot set the price. The price of oil is always going to be set in the global market, and that's, what's we're, that's what we're seeing now. Then we lose. You're just saying to us that we lose. No, we have, because, no and, I don't think, no, I, 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 I don't, look, I don't uh, think that's what uh, I'm saying, Lou. I'm saying look, that the price the is going to be page. set by the market. Each one of us wants to see greater oil production, right? Mm -hmm. We want to see more Absolutely. exploration. We want to see more refining. Sure. So how do we create the incentives? How do we awaken this administration or the next to the reality that we're going to reconvene the laws of supply and demand and that we will put the American consumer first? Because as you and I are talking here, the world is deleveraging right now. The world is deleveraging. Sure. And we're watching globalization roll back. The, and we've got to take control of our own future, and no one is talking honestly about that reality. The first We're thing, only talking about, by the way, 4 million barrels of finished uh, petroleum products and export. We all agree on the supply issue, and we've got to do more in this country right. than we can. The other thing we need to do is take a look at the regulations that are being hammered down on the refinery industry. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a rule, for example, where the refineries have to pay a fine to, to blend a product that doesn't exist in the marketplace yet. Now, how many blends the are there for the summer? How uh, many blends? There's are there? several blends, and yeah. they're regional, and they're all over the place. And, and the blending issue uh, is is a concern. But the bigger concern is these these layers upon layers of right. these regulations on the gas, and it's but sending what you're the refinery saying, business like, overseas. What you guys are saying, though, uh, uh, Tom, uh, Robert, what I hear you saying is we could wipe out all of those blends, we could get rid of all of those regulations, and we still would be subject to global uh, uh, demand rather than have well, control think, of our own, our own natural could, resources and the way in which they are produced and refined. And the American people aren't going to buy that. We can have a, an energy renaissance in this country. It's happening on private lands right now. And the industries that follow, the manufacturing Not if we don't take control follow. of our resources, Tom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And well, we let me need jump a in government here, Lou, that will I, help do please, that. Please, jump in. 
You're yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I have to agree or disagree rather a little bit with Tom here. I think one of the key issues is the issue of boutique and regional blends. The U.S. has the most balkanized motor fuel market in the world. We have at least 15 different uh, blends of gasoline that are used during the, during the year. Right. That amounts to about 45 different grades. Why are we having this? I think this is something that could easily uh, uh, be uh, addressed by the EPA and or, and or the Obama administration, simplify right. logistics and ease the flow of motor fuel throughout the this country. President it's not is already, happening. Yeah, and you know what, guys? I mean, this president's already said he's not going to come up with a silver bullet, a, a magic solution, a short-term solution. In fact, the EPA is going out trying to kill the coal industry and tear up our, our, our utilities in this country, which are, what, 42, 43 percent uh, dependent upon coal as a source for uh, power generation. Sure. Uh, what can be done here? I mean, the American people... Tom, we're, we're, getting, we're getting murdered by this administration. We need a change in direction of the leadership in this country, or we need new leadership in this country. Because if you look at the significant problems in the energy space, they all tie back to how the government is mismanaging and micromanaging the energy sector in this country. And Do it we have global prices. Gentlemen, I, I want to ask both of you. I, real succinctly, we're already over, obviously, and as always. But, I, I mean, what can we... We've got the... We've got the best technological minds in the world. Why don't we have the ultimate pure carbon uh, capture and store system for coal in this country? Why don't we, why don't we apply all of that technology to every fossil fuel uh, that's available? We could, but we'd be spending more money and the consumers would be paying more money. I mean, we already have clean air and clean water. Let me ask it's cleaner you. than and most of the developing countries. Well, let me countries. ask you both. We just went back to it. We've got the lowest demand for gasoline in 15 years. We have got a huge supply, and we're still paying exorbitant prices. Why can't we take control of our natural resources, our energy reserves, and our marketplace? Because the government is standing well, well, in the way. Robert? You get the last I'm, word I'm, here. I'm for more. I'm, I'm, okay, thanks. I'm for more production I'm, and more exploration Me here too. In, the, in the U.S. Absolutely. But, but we have to keep in mind, Lou, that in the oil market, not the coal market, not the natural gas market, those are going to be separate, but the oil market, the price is going to be set in the global marketplace. And I know you don't like it. And a lot of consumers don't like it. But I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but that's, the, oh. in fact, the reality. If that's the reality, then we're back to, to my proposition that we create a national like the Texas Schools Trust or the Alaskan Permanent Trust for American uh, American citizens, participating at every stage of uh, of production and marketing and sales of petroleum products, so that we're in the upside, uh, if that's going to be the case, because these are uh, the American people's resources that are being uh, shipped uh, overseas to the to the immense profit of a number uh, of our companies. And I want you to export it. I want you to make all the money in the world. But I want the American people to participate in the upside. Fair deal? It only works if the government allows us to get after those resources. So that's the it's key. What it's, so the it's, it's what we allow the government. It's what we allow the government. And there's no reason in the world for any American to support going after those resources if you don't let the American consumer participate in the upside. Do you agree, Robert, or not? Well, I, I don't know. Lou, you and I have talked about this yep. before. I think uh, that, that it's a long subject. I'm, I'm not certain. Okay, I'm here's, ready a, to buy here's my in. short answer. But, I don't but, believe but the American make, people. Me... No, I've go, got to say this. If you guys okay. can't buy into this, I really believe this, and I remember who said it to you. If you can't put the American consumer into the process here, because these are our natural resources as American citizens, and make certain that we're part of the equation and participate in the upside, you, you know, your frustration is only beginning. That's my that's my outlook. Thank you very much, Robert. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lou. Up next.